Welcome to the Startup Grind. Tell us about, um, this is another thing that I, I think is, is not very well known. I really want to get to electronic arts and some of these other things, but I must ask you this about um, when Steve was allowed to see what Xerox was doing at Park. Um, tell us about that story and how you, I mean, you were right in that story. We all know that story. So tell us, you, tell us how, yeah, how that yeah, happened so and, and what role you played there. So you guys have all heard of the uh, Xerox Alto, uh, the machine. And one of the uh, software services that ran on it was Smalltalk. So he, he had been, I guess, invited by Adele Goldberg to go up and see that. And it was, mo it was more about the Smalltalk demo, but you can't see the demo without using the Alto, and the Alto's got the mouse, you know, the bitmap graphics, et cetera. So he thought that was all pretty cool. He comes back, and he tells me, and he grabs me and John Couch and Tom Whitney, and the four of us get back in the car and go back up there, and all got a chance to look at it. And... Uh, the first time. This is the first time that anyone had seen it. I mean, at, from Apple, anyway. Yeah, it was this the first kind of official Apple yeah, visit. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Steve and I had actually already been talking about the mouse. And, in fact, I had uh, hired a guy that had been with Xerox. And that guy, uh, incredibly bright guy, Glenn Edens, he smuggled the first mouse, on my, at my request, smuggled it in from a colleague of his uh, at Xerox. Because you couldn't just get your hands on one easily. In fact, the Xerox mouse at that time, the bill of materials, the component parts, cost about five hundred dollars. Wow! So it's a big no deal. To, we essentially stole that from Xerox, <laughs> and of course, we realized right away, yeah, we we can't make a mouse that's this expensive. I mean, statute of limitations is over, right? So you're fine at this point, right? Well, they actually didn't invent the mouse, uh, but they they had one. Uh, but to give an idea of the kind of work that I was doing, we, we, we were figuring out, yeah, we, we really think this mouse makes sense. Uh, we ended up hiring a, a, a Stanford friend of mine and his design company to design a mouse for us that would be a lot cheaper. And it ended up, it was the first optical mouse that had a parts cost of $15. And of course, that, that's what enabled it to be commercially viable. And uh, basically, around, around this time where we're thinking about, you know, what you see is what you get, and bitmap graphics. Of course, Apple II already had bitmap graphics. So I think, I think there was already an understanding why that was a good thing, and how can we do more with it. And uh, uh, Markla, when I first started there, he said to me, uh, hey, hey I, th I think this is hilarious, because I didn't really know that much about business. I was a kid. <clears throat> and Markla says to me, hey, Tripp, you know, uh, you have an MBA. Therefore, you must know something about business. Pretty laughable. Go figure out how we can sell these to businesses. So that was basically my first assignment. And the, the big pivot there was it the, all of the thinking at that time was, oh, you know, big companies have computers. And as these computers are getting cheaper, smaller companies can have them. And now with these even cheaper ones, small businesses can have them. And I looked at that and realized, you know, no, that's not going to work because it's just uh, – no, it's not it's not the right audience because they're they're not technically sophisticated enough to deal with it and they're not even that sophisticated about the kind of things they would do with it like accounting and so we've basically uh, I sort of drove the process of figuring out that we should go after the office desktop and then we started looking at the word processor market and there were already a couple of WYSIWYG uh, products like Xerox had one called the Xerox 860 and, and they had a white display that looked like a sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11, but it didn't have a mouse. So one of the things I did is I went to the uh, annual office trade show to try to figure out what was going on competitively, and Xerox had these on display in their booth, and over in the corner, with no power being assigned to it, was a uh, um, Xerox Alto. And uh, I thought, okay, that's kind of funny. They don't even, they don't even, they don't even showing it to people. And I, I went up to the reception desk and I uh, said, uh, who, so who's the highest ranking guy here? Oh, that guy over there. He's a senior vice president. Again, I'm just a kid. So I go over and I say, so I noticed you have an alto over here in the corner, but you're not uh, demonstrating it. Uh, how come? And he like, makes some excuse. He said, so I'm, I'm just curious. Um, the alto uses a mouse, but none of your commercial products like the 860 use a mouse. Why is that? Because I don't like it. Really? Well, why don't you like it? Because it can roll off the table. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. <laughs> this is true. And I was able to fly back home, say, we don't have to worry about Xerox. <laughs> they can't even get it to stop rolling off the table. Well, you could just wow. tell they had no idea. They just had no idea.